All right guys, what's going on? So if you guys caught the last video, you must have saw that I installed these hex lights. How do I look? I installed these hex lights in the garage for you guys because the content before, I couldn't even make content in this garage. The lighting was so terrible that I physically could not make content that was even worth being put on YouTube. So now that I have these lights, we're gonna make some nice install videos in the garage and bring as much content as we possibly can. So let me know what you guys think about these hex lights. I have no affiliation with these guys, but I know this is kind of a popular thing. People are doing them in gyms, barber shops, garages, detail shops. So I want to share with you guys something if you guys are looking for some better light in the garage. I think these were 140 bucks. So check them out. Quality was good, easy to install, and they plug right into an outlet. And you can connect these, and you, like I was thinking about doing another set here and back there, might be too much, but I might do like three right across here. So I just wanna share with you guys before we get into the, today's video. Today's video is gonna be a quick little how-to video on how to change the oil on an FK8 Type R. Sorry about the mess here. Haven't got the car out of the garage really to clean this. The weather's been kind of crappy, but let's focus on this today. The start of today's video, I guess, is a product plug type of video because we got the hex lights, and now I'm gonna tell you that if you are a car enthusiast and you wrench on your own vehicle, even if you're a certified parts swapper like myself, not really a mechanic, buying a set of quick jacks makes installs 1,000 times easier and 1,000 times safer than trying to get four jack stands under a car, especially in a tight space like this. I only got maybe two feet on each side. So 100% recommend quick jacks. These are the 5,000 pound, 24 inch height. So creeper work and any sort of installation under the vehicle, there's plenty of space. So highly recommend. I got these before they got expensive. They used to be able to you, can, you used to be able to get them for like a thousand bucks on sale. Now they're like 1500, but either way, highly recommend make the investment if you are capable because you will not regret that. All right, first things first, you're gonna wanna pop the hood. I have hood pins, so I like to pop the hood pins first and then do the release. I think it's the proper way so you don't crack any carbon, but let's get this thing opened up. Quick sidebar now that we've got the hood open. Look at the lighting here, perfect. It's like just the right amount of light and then it's nice and crystal clear. So you can see everything in the engine bay. So let's get this thing up in the air and I'll show you guys exactly how to do this. I want to make this video for you guys too because in today's world, the dollar does not go as far as it used to at all, obviously. So saving a couple bucks on doing an oil change yourself is 100% worth it in my book. Uh, because I know if you bring this car to a dealership, they're gonna charge you at, my guess, minimum 80 bucks, but it's probably more than that. So for me, OEM filter, crush washer, six quarts of Pennzoil Platinum, or ultra platinum is probably, I don't know, under $60 and probably 20, 30 minutes of my time on a Saturday. So to me, it's worth it. So I wanna share with you guys, if you guys are trying to cut back in certain spots and also a little money savings can be put right back into the car. Like a degenerate. I think we're all degenerates because all we do is spend money on the cars, but an extra 40 bucks, 50 bucks here, it's gonna go a long way for anything, whether you invest it in the car, invest it somewhere else, or some people think their time's more valuable, so they will take it to the dealership. But for the people that are trying to learn and get into wrenching on their own cars, this is definitely the first step and something that is easy enough and can be done quickly. So some things you're gonna need you're gonna need an oil catch pan, a funnel. I got 3A sockets with a 3-inch drive. 
and some shop towels, and if you'd like, a set of gloves so you don't make a mess on yourself. And like I stated before, you're gonna need the oil, oil filter, I'll, I'll show you guys what the part number is for these cars, and a crush washer. So it took me about three minutes to get the quick jacks under the car, got it plugged in now. So if you're using a jack and jack stands, please use jack stands with a jack. Don't just jack it up with a jack because that is not safe. And I do not want to see any of you guys get hurt. So let's get this thing in the air and I'll show you the next step. And with these quick jacks, they have these locks right here. So you heard a couple clicks, so they have one here. This is like the halfway setting, and then this is a fully extended. So you go all the way up, and then bring it back, just kind of like a two post lift where there's the lock mechanism. So this thing is not going anywhere. So I'm gonna have to figure out a better lighting setup for underneath the car for these installs. But first we're gonna take off the skid plate, the aluminum skid plate. You're gonna need a flathead screwdriver and a Phillips tip. All right, so we got these flatheads. We got a bunch of these. And then up front, let's see, up front we have two Phillips heads that we gotta take care of. Then the skid plate will go back towards the back of the car and fall down. Next step in the process, you got your collection pan and the drain bolt on the Civic Type R is a 17 millimeter. So we're gonna take that out and try not to make a mess. If this is your first time doing it, take it slow, but you can definitely make a mess I have in the past because the oil is gonna shoot. Not on this car, but probably one of my first oil changes. So try to avoid that for you guys. Before we start draining, take off the oil fill cap, kind of as a relief vent for Taking the oil out. So break it loose with your wrench. And then I like to hand thread it. Probably shouldn't be wearing this nice Carhartt hoodie, but Super easy. Come inside to get the oil. We got Remy. Come here, Rem. Yeah, you're scared of the camera, huh? You're such a weenie. As you can hear the oil draining, I got my 5W30 as called upon or called for by the RV6 Turbo. I like the Ultra Platinum. Good oil for cheap. And here's the part number for the OEM filter. And you're gonna need a new crush washer for said drain bolt. Always replace those, they're cheap insurance. As you can hear, the oil is still draining. So we'll wait for that to drain, then we'll get the filter off. As we're waiting, these cars take 5.7 quarts of oil if you're running the factory setup. Um, obviously, when you put the oil in, make sure you check that the dipstick is reading correctly. Might be a little bit more, a little less, but as long as the dipstick's happy, we're happy. Quick tip with oil filters, lefty loosey, righty tighty, and these shouldn't be that tight. I, you should be able to hand snug them pretty much as tight as you can by hand, and that should be tight enough, and that will allow you to get it off too, even with all the heat cycles. Like I just cracked this loose by hand. It's also more difficult when you have oily hands, so try to keep your hands clean. And you're just gonna spin it off all the way. Be careful you don't make a mess. Don't want that happening. If you do make a mess, go down to your local pet store, and grab some kitty litter. It'll soak up the oil. All right, let's get that seal cleaned up. Make sure there's no gasket there. 
And we're going to pour a little bit of oil into the new filter, lube up the gasket, and we're going to send the new one on. So you're going to want to make sure you put a little bit of oil in here and lube up the gasket. Don't put too much oil because these oil filters sit at a little bit of an angle. So if you fill it to the top, you're just going to get oil all over the place. But make sure you lube the gasket. All right, so it's snug. We're going to get it nice and tight. Just by hand, that's all you need. Here you go. As tight as you possibly can by hand, just so it doesn't back out. All right, so filter's on. I'm gonna leave off the under tray in it for now. We're gonna fill it up, check for leaks. We'll put the under tray back on, and that's it. Obviously, we'll check the dipstick, make sure we're good. But pretty simple process. If you guys have any questions about it, just let me know. Drop one down below. But let's get this thing filled up. Also, always make sure your funnels are clean when adding oil or adding anything really. Make sure your funnels are clean. Let's get this out of the way. Like I said, 5.7 quarts. We'll start with that and we'll check the dipstick. Try not to make a mess. That should be about right. So we'll give it a minute to settle down into the pan and we'll check the oil level. I'm gonna be honest with you, this is probably the cleanest oil change I've ever done in my life. So maybe it's because I got the camera rolling, but I'm not mad about it. Usually I got a little bit of a mess down there, but kind of took my time, especially with recording, it takes a little bit longer, but hope this helps somebody out. Check that dipstick. Grab yourself a fresh towel. Pop out the dippy, give it a quick wipe, put it back in, I'm struggling to find the hole because I'm a little, a little short, pull it back out and take a look at the fluid level, it's kind of hard to tell on camera but we are good to go. The last thing we're going to do here, get the funnel out of here, put it right in the bucket with the rag, put the oil cap back on. Yeah, that was right. It was OW20. It says right in that oil cap. So now to finish this up, you're going to put the under tray back on, check for leaks, and that's how you do it. And I always like to check the dipstick after I run the car for a little bit, let everything settle to the bottom, make sure everything's still at the appropriate level. And if so, or if it's not, add a little bit. So it's always better to put a little bit less than too much oil in. Otherwise, that might cause issues. So I'm going to get that wrapped up, and we'll close this video out. All right, so I know not the most exciting video out there, but I hope this helped you guys. Pretty basic, um, just a couple of hand tools and a little bit of time might take you a little bit, you might make a couple of mistakes, you might get oil all, your, all over your driveway the first time, but definitely worth it, and I've been doing this for years now, super simple. So if you guys have any questions, make sure you subscribe, and yeah, catch you guys in the next video.